Hey everyone, this week was quite busy and yet it started with some depressingly routine news. Prince Harry released a 15-point action plan to defeat, quote, fake news, although he seemingly missed off the most important one. Number one, get rid of Meghan. Also, President Macron expressed sorrow at the death of 30 economic migrants who were trying to escape France in order to get to England, but he told Boris not to worry because there's plenty more where they came from. But then, of course, COVID is back in the news with a new variant, literally the Greek letter new, or at least it was until they changed it. I'll get to that in a minute. To quote Joe Moore, though, it's a great day to bury bad news, so be prepared, therefore, for a litany of damning government reports and statistics to quietly be published over the weekend, safe in the knowledge that few people will pay attention. That is, however, only the tip of a very large iceberg. There are seemingly a lot of things going on in the world that the press are not reporting at the moment. On the COVID front alone, let's just look at that variant's name again. These have been getting named sequentially after Greek letters, and this one should have been called the New Variant. I'm sure a number of tabloid editors already had pun-based headlines ready to print, but as of this morning, the WHO decided to skip a couple letters and are just going straight to Omicron. Interestingly, Omicron is an anagram of moronic, and it seems that the WHO decided to skip Xi. It's written XI in English in order to presumably not offend the Chinese dictator, I mean president, democratically elected president, allegedly, who spells his name XI, because the last thing we'd want to do would be to embarrass the Chinese government. I mean, it's not as if they're responsible for COVID or anything, although I guess let's give them some credit. Most people didn't think something made in China would have lasted as long as it has. On the topic of Chinese news, though, there has also been a remarkable amount of military manoeuvring going on, all unreported in the West. This week saw the US Congress introduce the, quote, Taiwan Invasion Prevention Act, which is a stack of laws basically allowing Joe Biden to go to war in the Chinese Sea without actually declaring war or asking Congress. It's similar to how the US never officially went to war in either Korea or Vietnam, simply calling them police actions. Instead, there have been a lot of talk about stationing nuclear weapons in Taiwan, all as part of a last-ditch retaliation should the island get invaded in the next year. Maybe they already have them there. It's fairly scary really and Joe Biden was actually explicitly asked recently quote are you saying the US would come to Taiwan's defense if China attacked to which he replied yes yes we have a commitment to do that and yet despite this they still have a situation where the US military is preparing to lay off literally hundreds of thousands of people you know, I've mentioned this a couple of times so far but the clock is still ticking on that one the deadline is January 4th and on that date the armed forces will by presidential decree disband vast numbers of personnel everyone from pilots to mechanics to civilian contractors and it would be somewhat ironic if the left-wing president that gutted the armed forces was the same one that later wanted to stage a proxy war against China. Closer to home though, here's an interesting question that hasn't been seen on TV much. What is the deal with the Queen? She disappeared for several weeks and apparently all is well. In fact, the only story I saw on the BBC was something about Freddie Mercury and LGBT rights. Nonetheless, if you venture online, the general consensus is that she has leukaemia and possibly had a stroke, hence her several weeks absence. You know, there's a real shades of the spy catcher scandal here where things were seemingly discussed everywhere else in the world except from Britain. The same thing admittedly happened in the US though recently. The governor of California gave daily press briefings for over two years about COVID. Then about a month or two ago, he had a Moderna vaccine on live television. Then he cancelled his trip to the climate change woke fest in Scotland and nobody saw or heard from him in two weeks. So he eventually showed up to give a scripted interview where we only got to see one side of his face. He's since been out of the public eye and leaked reports all suggest that he suffered palsy down one side of his body and they're desperately trying to fix him before the day comes when he actually has to take part in active politics. He's not up for election for another year or so, so he's largely hiding out in a bunker with a round-the-clock staff of doctors in experimental medicine, not to mention a complicit media reporting every press release as the gospel truth rather than ask difficult questions. You know, I could go on with these stories. There are a remarkable number of famous people who have died or disappeared from public life in the last six months, but I do try to keep these videos short. And to be honest, of all the stories going on this week, the one I find saddest is the decision by Westminster Council to allow Marks and Spencers to demolish its Art Deco headquarters in Oxford Street in favour of something so generic it could have been built pretty much anywhere else in the world. Although at least everybody will be in agreement that it's still better than that ghastly mound thing that the council built around the corner of that marble arch. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.